G'day, welcome to Art with Alison. Uh, first of all, I just mentioned I've got a sore throat, so my voice might be sounding a little bit funny. Um, but other than that, I am perfectly fine. And anyway, just uh, having a good time at the moment. I've just done a couple of paintings. I expect they'll already be up on YouTube by the time you're listening to this one. And I've been experimenting with a new satin enamel that I, well, new for me, uh, which is uh, the, satin, the deco art satin enamel in the dark denim. So rather than having the satin enamel in the white, I've been putting it in with some dark colour. But I thought to contrast from the last couple that I've done in which I have had the satin enamel paint, I thought that I would try tonight without any satin enamel paint and see if that does make any difference at all. I mean, the satin enamel might not be what's causing the effects that I'm uh, am attribu attributing to the satin enamel anyway. So to, to tonight, for this one, I'm going to be doing it without the satin enamel paint at all. All right, so it, we're just doing these experiments on little 8 by 8 inch or 20 by 20 centimetre canvases and yeah just having a ball at the moment really enjoying this so I've made up a little oh, noises in the background I have dogs I've got lots of dogs and they live in the house with me I breed Labradors and I've got a litter at the moment of they're just over two weeks old and so you might be hearing squeaky noises from them but the squeaky noise you heard just now was from a three-month-old anyway uh, so yeah, please excuse the dog noises. You'll also hear snoring, I'm sure, because they snore very loudly. So in this one, I've just made up some some just sh say shallow um, layers of different colours, the same colours I'm going to be using in the paw, and I'm going to be putting this in the corners. And this is for the actual paw. And I'm going to start off, as I've done with the others, with a dark colour, only this time without the satin enamel. So this, this one here, this is made up of cool blue and then some warm blue and then a bit of black. So probably, more, you know, in descending order as in amount. So just, it's just made this lovely... It's, all, it's not quite a navy, it's more like a very deep royal blue. I think it's a gorgeous colour. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of dark Cezine purple. Uh, this is a Liquitex dark Cezine purple. This one is a Liquitex deep. That's the dogs going through the doggy door. Um, this is a deep turquoise, or turquoise deep actually it's called, and so I'm doing fairly thin layers because it's only a little cup, and this is the extreme sheen, this is Decoite extreme sheen aquamarine. The aquamarines are mixed uh, they're one part paint to three quarters of a part flow troll because I wanted to keep them fairly thick and I'll just add a bit of this white because I have found in the other paintings it the white almost has disappeared but it's just given a slight highlight to the aquamarine so we'll see if that continues and a little bit of gold. This is the 24K gold by Deco Art Extreme Sheen. Basically, these are my favourite colours. Uh, shall I? Yeah, I guess I should use the same colours in the other ones. Just pop that down a moment. So this one here is the Decorate Extreme Sheen in Garnet, which is actually a beautiful, deep, rich red. 
and this is the Decolite Extreme Sheen Pink Tourmaline. Tourmaline. Tourmaline, that's it. <laughs> uh, I might just put a little bit of white next to that. With the idea of going from dark to light to sort of give it a bit of contrast or a bit of, yeah, and back to the dark again. So this is back to the dark, dark blue. So before, in the other, the previous two that I've just done, I was using the, the same colour but with the satin enamel colour mixed in. But this time, as I said, I'm not using the satin enamel and we'll just see whether or not it does make any difference to the type of result we get. Of course, every painting is different when you're doing this style of art, which is one of the reasons I love it. It's impossible to do two paintings exactly the same, even if you try hard. I'll just tip this, actually. I love this aquamarine. Oh, my I love all these colours. I think these are all my favourites. I hope that you're all keeping safe and well. It's particularly scary for those of you in America, I'm sure. Some terrible statistics coming from there. My heart does go out to you all. Can't imagine, yeah, I mean, still might happen here, but so far, so far it hasn't been too bad in Australia. And hopefully it continues that way, but really it only needs one person to unknowingly be carrying it around. That's why the social distancing or the physical distancing. I've heard a few people saying it shouldn't, it would be better if it was called physical distancing, not social distancing, because it's sad to uh, be, yeah, the whole wording of social distancing when we're having to self-isolate and then it's been called social distancing. It makes some people feel all the more lonely. And it's, you know, you don't have to socially distance. She, you know, like we're so lucky with today's technology with being able to do video calls. So we don't have to socially distance. It's social media. Just physical distancing keep us safe. I've heard in Australia in last night's news they were saying how there's been additional benefits Ooh, that went into the, um, with this social distancing we're getting less of the normal flu cases. Like there's hardly been any normal flu cases whereas usually there's been a few hundred flu cases by this time of the year. So yeah, social distancing sounds like a good idea in some aspects, in some ways I should say. Right, so I think that's about enough. I'll just finish with a bit of that, the dark blue. I'll be using this as the base coat as well. I think that's enough. All right, I'll clear this way. I'll be back in a tick. Because I cleaned the mat just before, 
can do this because I know it's all clean. All right. So, so this is just going to use this for the base coat, just for the little puddle there. As I've said before, this doesn't have any of the satin enamel in it, so we'll see if that if we can deduce any difference in the type of outcome we get. See? Just going to do a straight pour. It's heading off in that direction. I think the last bits come out. Here we are. Gee, it's not nearly so much of that red. Maybe I didn't put as much red in. As in the dark red, I can see the pink tourmaline. Give that a little torch. And now to do the corners. Yeah, last time I gave that a little stir, I might do the same. Otherwise you can end up with just all one colour because it's only doing a small bit. Put a bit of this around the edges. The reason for this, 
for any of you who are new to this. The reason for doing this is it helps the paint from your pore to slide rather than roll over itself. If you're stretching it out over the canvas, the parts on the edges will catch onto the canvas and then roll under. So you can lose the edges of your composition. I mean, sure, usually you lose the edges of your composition anyway, but it just helps you to keep as much of it as possible in case you, like you don't always lose it all. As long as you decide to stop and before it goes over the edges. Anyway, it's quite pink this one. Just a few little bits of gold coming through. I might give that another torch, which helps any... But what the heat does is the heat will help the... Well, okay, paint. You find the different paint colours will have different paint densities and some are more likely to be lighter in weight than others and so this helps bring some of the different colours to the surface basically. There's no silicon oil or anything of that sort in my paints, in these paints at least and so I'm relying really on the Floetrol to bring me the cells and also the satin enamel, not satin enamel, the extreme sheen from the deco art that does help or that yeah usually does create creates these lovely to me they look like boulders, these lovely cells. I really love them. Right, I'm just gonna scoop some of this into my fingers and just go around the edges now. Just to there's some that's come off over here, which indicates that this side might be lower. So I might also just pop a little popsicle stick under that corner, and maybe under this one as well, because. coming off over this side too, so I do believe my table is flat. It's a kitchen island bench is what I'm using here. But sometimes, even though I, I, you know, you think that you've hammered the push pins in all the same, but well, sometimes too there might be a little bit of paint stuck underneath the the push pins because they if they've been used in a previous pour, then sometimes you get paint that's still there, and that can make the push pins end up being a different height. Oh, I just want my fingers. Now, one of the reasons for taking my time and doing the pour first and then doing the edges and all that is because you might have noticed that in this time there's been these beautiful cells have come up which is why it's good just to give it that little bit of extra time not to rush straight in and start tilting if you want to get that sort of effect and I am like in these corners I think they match in very nicely so I'm happy with that I might do, it's also pretty, but I need to stretch it to that middle bit's really pretty. I mean, I don't need it, you could just leave it like this. There is a lot of paint on it though, and also if you leave it with a lot of paint, not only does it increase the chance of cracking because the surface can dry more quickly than underneath, which causes the surface to crack, 
I've not actually touched wood so far had that happened to me. Um, but what it can also mean if you leave it too thickly coated. Oh, stop playing in the background. <laughs> Sorry, they do look cute. Um, but also if it's if you've got a thick layer of it, then it's more likely to keep spreading out of its own accord and so you will end up losing your composition. But hey gee, I'm really I'm really liking this just how it is. Um be nice if that went down that way a bit more, but I don't think I can really change that. This is so pretty. I just is my fridge turning off. Back to the middle. The reason to go back to the middle is because that helps you to keep your composition. If you go flying all over the place, your composition can get totally mucked up. I mean, you might want that. You might want a different composition than the one you've got, but I actually quite like what's happening in the middle here. So I would, if I can, try and keep that fairly the same. So I know I'm not heading off and dipping it over, but just stretching out the cells a bit. By doing this, you can see some of the cells are getting bigger. Right. Dog shaking itself. Just keep your hair to yourself. Uh, I'm, yeah, I had a a bit of a kind of a break with not doing that many because I had two litters at once of puppies not long ago and it's just so busy and just getting back into it and oh my goodness I am so loving this this is such fun it's really worth doing any of you guys who just have been watching without actually doing any yet hey Get some paints, get a canvas, just do one because it's a lot of fun and it really, it's a great feeling of, I might just swirl that around a bit, see if I can even up that blue bit at the top. It's just, yeah, just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the more you do it, the more you understand the paint and what it does really, is what I'm finding. So you can end up having more control over your outcome to some extent. <laughs> this um, fluid art though, the paint has the last say basically. I love that. I'm so pleased. You see, by stretching it, see how it's made, I better not put my fingers over the top while they're dripping in paint, but you can see how those cells, like that one with the gold on this side and the ones with gold on the other side, they were quite small and now they've got a lot bigger. So that has something to do with the stretching. And I'm really liking doing these corners first, hey? Because it all just matches in and I haven't got to Otherwise I'd have lost all this, oh, all around the outside, <laughs> not most of it, a lot of it. So it'll be interesting to compare them with the ones with the satin enamel. What I can see so far is that these cells are possibly more compact. They are more like boulders in this one. And the other ones were a little bit more um, shall I use the word fluffy? But anyway, it'll be interesting to have them side by side, which I'll do in a minute and, and see. All right, I'll give it another torch and then I'll bring you in for a close-up. Oh, before you go, 
just point out to you people who might not have seen that many videos yet. It's really important to just scrape off what comes off the base of your canvas. Now I'm putting this down because what I do is I like to save what I scrape up and that can be used in another pour. So this is all my scraped up paint here from the last few pours. And so yeah, just so as you can see as I go skim along the bottom it ends up you collect quite a bit of paint. And the reason for this is because as I mentioned before the paint will keep sort of sliding off because of gravity and it would yeah. So the paint on the sides will be pulling it down. So you need to make less paint on the sides basically by scraping off the base of your canvas and that way it'll help to reduce the loss of paint from your composition. And whilst doing this it's a good idea just to just check your corners, just make sure they're all covered because often the corners can have little gaps. So far they all look fine. And all right, I'll just swing this around to do the other side. A little squeaky baby puppy. All right, I have them in the house with me so I can be sure they're all fine. Because they can get stressed, sometimes they wander away, even though they're in a big, what's called a whelping box, they can get a bit stressed if they wander away from the others and can't find their way back because they still haven't opened their eyes. So they're basically blind. Well, they are blind. Um, right, there's a tiny gap there. Now sometimes this can be done, as I said before, the paint will just pull itself down. So if I just touch a bit at the top and then pull it down, that might be enough. But no, there's not really enough paint in that spot. So that little squeak is fine. If it gets any worse, I can just pop over there and see what's happening. No, it really needs to be darker and not that dark. So you want to look around, see what paints you've got that match up with what's gone there. And if you can't find exactly the same, sometimes it doesn't matter because there's a streak of gold there. So we've got the gold and the aqua. And we'll just do that and then let it fall down. And it needs to go around a bit further. So just, and then let it fall. As I was saying, no, that didn't work. So I was saying in the last video, uh, dog coming through the doggy door. Um, before doing it with the white base coat, no, that's the wrong color. Um, when you're doing this, you, I find I, I end up picking up a lot of white, and it's harder to match. Whereas because I haven't got a white, oh, that's better match. Because I haven't got a white base coat on this one it's turning out a lot better yay I like that oh. you kind of need to check on the puppy the baby puppy it's all right they're just playing the older dogs it doesn't sound like it sometimes. 
Oh, I'm really pleased. I'm so enjoying doing this. Hey guys, if you haven't done it or you haven't, or you haven't done it for a while, just get some paints and do it because, gee, it's fun. I'm just so enjoying this. I am so happy That's what I've done just today. I'll be putting them up one by one on YouTube. Takes a while usually to go through editing. So I wanted to wanted to see if I could see any difference between the one that's got satin enamel, which is on those two, and this one which doesn't. Let's see if so these ones, we'll look at the wispy bits, the wispy bits there. Yeah, I think these wispy bits are more clumpy, aren't they? They're more solid, more rounded. And these are more feathery. And especially this one. This one looks very feathery. So maybe that's the difference. They give you the feathery look. And this gives you the rounder cells, which I also love. So it's interesting, isn't it? Okay, so. Just go in for some close-ups. A overhead light on, so I think it's showing the colours nicely more than the flash. The little bit's probably darker in real life than this is looking like. Well, it's night times. So <laughs> I'll know more when it's daylight. I don't know if I'll be putting the dried results up of this one. Depends if it's dried by the time I want to put the video up, basically. All right, there we go. I am very happy. Thanks again very much for watching this video. Please um, hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Thanks so very, very much to everyone who's subscribed. I'm over the 500 mark now. And yeah, it's really rewarding seeing the numbers growing. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's free, so please do. It's a good way to find out when I do new videos, if you want to know that. Just hit the notification bell and then hit all for being notified of all the videos that I'm going to be putting up after this one. You can always go back and look at previous ones, such as these ones. So happy. Okay, thanks again for watching. Take care, keep safe, catch you again soon. Bye-bye. So it's been a couple of days and it's almost dry. And I think for a start, that light blue part is just, it's just so vibrant, it sets it all off. I think it's so pretty, the colours. And this cell here, I think that one is just gorgeous. Same with these ones. Very loud snoring dogs behind me. So yeah, loving these. Don't they look so, yeah, it's almost 3D, that, the stripes. I'm really pleased.
pleased. It's turned out beautifully. It's dried nicely. These cells are so pretty too. Look at these ones with the bits of gold in them. So gorgeous. These ones. So loving this. So, so pretty. So, there we have it. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I'll catch you again soon. Take care of each other. Keep yourself safe. Stay well. And talk to you again soon. Okay, thanks again. Bye for now.